We love Amber. We love Amber. We love Amber. So who is Amber? Well, it's not a she. It is actually a note. And it's not necessarily one note. It's a combination of notes to achieve this like amber-like uh, quality in fragrances. And I love amber fragrances. But we also don't want to forget amber gris. So we have fragrances here uh, that are ambers or ambergris dominant. So if you're curious to find out my top 20 amber fragrances, please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. If this is your first time landing on this channel and you love watching fragrance reviews, finding out about new fragrances, discovering new brands, and of course participating in giveaways and still haven't subscribed to the channel, please click the subscribe button below and also click that bell icon so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. And yes, I'm a true amber head. I'm also a patch ho or patch head, but I also love me my ambers. Ambers are awesome, awesome fragrances, um, oriental fragrances, and of course there's no real true amber note. They create the amber note or quality by combining various um, notes to create this accord. According to my research, this is what I've learned. But there's also ambergris, and ambergris is the whale excretion that uh, they collect in the ocean and they use in perfumeries. So we have uh, fragrances here that are ambers, of course created from combining notes to create that amber accord. And then of course we also have ambergris dominant fragrances. And of course we have 20 plus. I've got a ton of them and I want to talk to you about them. I'm going to go through this list as quick as possible. So let's get started. We have two designers in the list and I'm going to start off with the first one because it's gotten a lot of hype currently. And this one is an actual designer fragrance that's very, very true amber fragrance. The fragrance I'm talking about is Issey Miyake's L'Odyssey Noir Ambre, this one right here. So this one is really a great quality designer amber fragrance. I'm not talking about a co private collection fragrance. I'm not talking about a, you know, exclusives collection. It is a hard to find fragrance. It's a Middle Eastern exclusive, but it's also available in Europe for some places as I've seen. But it's not currently here. But if you can get your hands on this, do because it is a really, really good amber. And the price is not overly expensive either. It's retailing around $100 to $150 approximately, which is what I've paid um, in Europe. So it's not break your uh, bank kind of prices, but it's also a little on the pricier side. But really, really good quality amber for a designer. And you should definitely get your hands on. And if you, uh, I mean, if you like designer fragrances, but you want to get out a little bit and do a little more niche style quality offerings, this is definitely one to start with because even though it's a niche style fragrance, it's very designer friendly, if that makes sense. So check it out. This is Noir Ombre, L'Odyssé Noir Ombre from Issey Miyake. The other design, designer fragrance we have here um, is from the, pri uh, the Privé collection of Dior, and this is Ombre Nuit, this one right here. Now this one actually uses Amber Gris, which is what's listed, but you have this very beautiful honeyed amber-like quality here. There's a little bit of a salty touch from the Amber Gris, but it's also very, very um, honeyed and uh, rosy. The rose adds this beautiful sweetness to it, but you know what? This is not one of those really big, intense, heavy, molasses -y ambers. It's very light and it's airy. It's Trans, it's like you can see through it. It's transparent and uh, it doesn't have um, intense denseness to it, if that makes sense. So it makes it for a very easy amber to wear, and I love it. It's very, very awesome. Um, I've actually I bought it for a while, but it was one of those fragrances I, I rarely wore. But over the years, I've started really falling in love with it because I get you know bored of some fragrances and I move on to the others. And this one's one of one that I'm really enjoying lately. So this is Ambre Nuit from Dior. Check it out if you can. Get yourself some samples or decants because the bottles are a little on the pricier side. We don't have any other designers. I wanted to feature Amber, Abs Amber Absolute here from uh, Tom Ford, but unfortunately we don't have it. But let's go ahead and go to a very popular one. This one's from the House of Tower Perfumes. And of course, I'm talking about L'Air du Desert Marocaine or Accor de Desert. We have the EDT concentration here, and we, we have the X-ray concentration here. So pure perfume, eau de toilette, if that makes sense. 
Both are good. I'm preferring the Accord de Desert version of this now. Um, I like the uh, intensity. It, I like the fact that it's also a little longer lasting. But for me, this one projects a little more uh, and it's, it's, the, it's the original. So either one, it's a toss up, you go with it. But this is all about a very dry, dusty, deserty amber. Spicy as well. It's not one of those really big and syrupy, vanillic, uh, um, molasses -y ambers, if that makes sense. But then again, this one actually comes off a little more syrupy than this one, but both are very dry. So a de Desert or Laird de Desert Marocaine, both from Tower Perfumes. Speaking about Tower Perfumes, we're gonna also include Tower Ville's Amber Flash. And this one actually is a very, uh, so to me, it smells a bit like, whereas this, these fragrances have the Tower Odd, uh, these fragrances have the Tower Ville Odd, if that makes sense. There's a DNA in here that you can smell from one to the other. Um, I think the DNA started popping up for me from Vanilla Flash into Incense Flash, then to Amber Flash, and then for Chuli, and then the Tuberose. So those are them. The Rose Flash doesn't include it, but this is a really great uh, amber to start off with if you're, uh, you know, trying to save money. Uh, they're $63 for a 30 ml. Really strong, potent fragrances. A little goes a long way, intense. They act like extrait de parfum concentration, so really heavy in the perfume oils. So if you want to explore ambers and you want niche and you want under 100, this is definitely one to try. But speaking of inexpensive, I definitely wanted to feature this one because it is around $20. It's Price is creeping up because it used to be found around $12, $14. This is Jovan's Secret Amber. And this is actually a really, really good quality amber for around the $20 mark. It's around 75 ml, I think. It's 88 ml. It's a really, really strange size. But you get a good quality amber and it won't break your bank. And it's currently, as I said, on Amazon, it's about $25, $22, $23, somewhere around there. And if you want to explore ambers, but you don't want to like shell out a lot of money with uh, the different ambers we have here, start with this one. And if you like this one and it's like, wow, I love amber fragrances, then you can move on to the other ones that are more expensive and more pricey. So check out Secret Amber, a very, very good amber for what you, you pay for. It's really, really good quality. So that's from the house of Jovan. We're going to go ahead and start getting into like major, major amber fragrances. And one of my favorite amber fragrances is Ombre Russe from Parfum the Empire or Empire. Um, boozy, beautiful, fruity, although not necessarily like uh, uh, ripe fruit, more like dried fruit. Also um, amber, very, very good. One of my favorite ambers and I love wearing it. It's, a, it's actually, I, when I was in Paris uh, several years ago, I bought their really big 500 ml bottle, which is um, no longer sold. And it comes with this little bottle where you can refill it up and then you can carry the bottle with you. But I'm glad to have this because um, it's such a great amber. It's easy to wear, it's boozy, it's uh, fruity, and it's just one of a kind. Uh, Ombre Russe, Russian amber is what it stands for. Amazing, check it out. Going to a house called Rania J. This is Ombre Loop. I have a review of this one on my channel with a guest, check it out. But this one is a beautiful balsamic amber with like doughy qualities. Like you, you smell like this like dough that's rising rather than it's cooked. So not necessarily gourmand, I guess, but because it's not cooked and ready, but I get really like doughy qualities because I, I used to bake with my mom. My mom made a lot of breads during Easter, like special Easter breads and cookies. And I helped her, you know, with the dough and that smell with that dough, with the yeast transferred here. But it's a very, very gooey amber um, with dry elements. It's not necessarily very syrupy. Like if you were to like drop the smell, it doesn't like kind of like drop. It's kind of like, um, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but uh, I, when I smell f fragrances, I can actually see the way they smell. And this one is not necessarily very flowy. It's a little more uh, grounds rather than like drippy, if that makes sense. But a really, really good amber. I love this one. Uh, the bottles are smaller, 50 ml, and they retail for about $130, somewhere around there. So this is Rania J. Ambre Loop. We're gonna do one from Roja Parfums. This is um, uh, Amber Oud. Uh, now it's called Amber Oud and it's ambery. For me, this one is more about the rose and the oud, but you do have the ambery qualities here. It's a bit misleading name, but it's actually a love at first sniff. If you were to put it into a, a category of rose and oud, this would be there. 
but also I wanted to feature it here because it's definitely an ambery fragrance and it's definitely one that I love. I love wearing it, uh, obviously as you can see, this is a 30 ml bottle, it's been about two years since I reviewed this and I've been using it up. I love this one, it smells so good, but again, it's amber plus lots of rose and lots of oud. Amber oud from Roja Parfums. So the next one, I wanted to include this right after we talked about uh, I'm Brain Wee from Dior, but I totally spaced. But I'm going to talk about it now. This is Grand Soir from Maison Francis Kirkjian. Now, this is another sort of easy to wear amber like the Dior uh, Ambre Nuit, but this one actually has a little more going for it. Um, it's a little more true amber, but it also, wow, I smell that smell and it's like, it, it, it just does it for me. It's that good of a smell. Between the two, the Dior uh, Ambre Nuit and this, this is hands down like a major winner for me. It's just very, very sexy. Um, it's an amber that's also not overly intense and heavy and molassesy, but this one is actually very flowy. It's really, really um, easy to wear. There's also a very uh, light and airy quality to it, but it doesn't, you know, perform light and airy. It performs really, really good, and it's a hands down winner for me. And one of my favorite fragrances from Maison Francis Kirkshot, if not my favorite fragrance. Grand Soir, check it out, I love it. Going to the house of uh, Carner Barcelona, it's Ambar del Sur, this one right here. Recently I reviewed this and we did a uh, full bottle giveaway. And this is going to that traditional amber fragrance, but this is going into a more vanillic territory, slightly gourmand territory, but so good. This is really, really good. I love wearing this one. And it's an amber, it's warm and gooey, and I love wearing these kind of fragrances in the winter time because they smell so good. They last a long time, and even though you might be out and about for the holidays or something, and or I don't know, something, uh, and you spray your fragrance on during the day, and at the end of the day, the fragrance you know, lingers on still. And that's what I like about ambers because they're more intense. And this is definitely one of them. Check it out if you like a more vanillic uh, amber. Ambar del Sur from Conor Barcelona. We're going to a house called uh, I Profumi di Firenze and their fragrance called Ambra del Nepal. This one right here, this is a one of a kind amber. Unfortunately, I only have a small bottle here, but their other bottles, uh, the regular size bottles are here. They're about $110 for a 50 ml, so they won't break your bank, but this one is a really, really good amber. I absolutely love this amber. I fell in love with it the very first time I smelled it, but currently I only have this little bottle, as I said, but, but hopefully in the future I'll get a larger bottle. But this one has very, very resinous touches, sweet touches. Of course, it goes vanillic, but it's you know one of those beautiful uh, ambers that uh, you're you're familiar with with uh, a lot of other amber fragrances, but there's something about this one that is really, really beautiful. It has kind of aromatic touches and spicy touches as well. So check it out, Ambar del Nepal. Really, really lovely amber from I Profumi di Firenze. Now, this next one I wanted to feature, but I don't have a full bottle of it. It's in my Semperd bottle here, and I've been wanting to get a full bottle, but I haven't had time yet. So this is actually Histoires de Parfum Ambre 114. Really, really good amber. I'm glad I have it here and I really hope to get a bottle and review it for you guys soon because it is one of those very, very traditional ambers that kind of goes into the territory of uh, Metro Parfumé at Gantier's Ambre Prisso. It's that kind of an amber. It's big, bold, and spicy and resinous and really balsamic. So if you don't know Ombre 114, check it out. I hope to get a full bottle in the future, in the near future, and do a review for you guys. And speaking of uh, Métal Parfumé at Gantier, we do have Ombre Perso here, one of a kind to die for amber. Um, if you don't know this one, you don't know amber fragrances, because most people that are into ambers go for fragrances like this, and they speak highly of this one. And I recommend it a lot. It's beast mode, it's major performing amber, Spicy, resinous, balsamic, beautiful. So Ambre Perso, check it out. Going to the house of Forte Manley, it's amber absolutely. Here we have a very beautiful resinous and balsamic amber, slightly powdery touches, but with that Forte Manley DNA that I really, really love. Was this fragrance inspired by Tom Ford's Amber Absolute? I'm not sure. But is this a great amber? It certainly is. To me, I find this one much more, much more interesting than Amber Absolute because Amber Absolute is one of those fragrances that make it so hard to get, if, even if you can get it. But then 
I already have that fragrance in other fragrances here. At least here we have something a little more unique. It's amber, but you've got a lot of interesting things happening with it. And you've got that really beautiful Forte Manley DNA. So very unique. So I'd rather have this one than Amber Absolute because if you're going to make it more difficult for me to get Amber Absolute, and I already have Amber Absolute sort of fragrances in my collection, why not go with something completely different? So that's Amber Absolutely. Check it out. It's awesome. Going to the house of Jovoy, it's Ambre Primaire. This one right here. Another amber that's really, really to die for. And here we have something from Javoy. Now this one actually is also very resinous. It's also very balsamic, warm and spicy. But here in this fragrance, it doesn't come off as beast mode as their other fragrances, which is fine because um, it doesn't all have to be beast mode. It doesn't all have to be intense and, uh, you know, overwhelming, but a really, really, truly beautiful amber here. It's really, really warm and spicy, and also warm and gooey, because there's a gooey touches here with this amber, but a really knockout amber. If you don't know Ombre Premier, check it out. I think you're gonna love it. Now, we're going to a house called Isabe, and this is probably one that you're not too familiar with. This is Ombre de Carthage. Man, this is one of a kind amber. Uh, truly, truly one of a kind and beautiful. And nobody talks about this house and it is a really, really great, great house. It's owned by the same folks that own Jacques Fat, the fragrances. And man, Ombre de Car Carthage is uh, so good, so, so good. Now it's ambers, but it goes into like a unique uh, aromatic and spicy territory. Uh, it has like herbal notes, qualities to it, along with like spices and of course resinous and balsamic notes. So very, very unique. It's nothing like these. It's not like your traditional uh, amber that you know people tend to copy over and over. And it's got a unique factor just like the amber absolutely from Fort Manley. Very, very different. If you like ambers and you want to explore something that's not been you know done before, um, you haven't smelled before, this is definitely one just like the Fort Manley. Ambre de Carthage from Isabe. Now we're going to an amber gris with Sex and the Sea from uh, Francesca Bianchi. Now this one is a very beachy, coconutty amber fragrance, but it's all about the amber gris. And so it has salty, woody touches as well. Very, very long lasting, but really, really fun to wear. Sex and the Sea is a really awesome uh, fragrance from the house of Francesca Bianchi, and I love wearing it. If you like amber gris, this is definitely one to try, but it's also got a very coconutty touch, and of course, there's also pineapple. But don't think we're going pina colada or aventus here. This is a very, very ambery fragrance. So, this is Sex and the Sea from um, Francesca Bianchi. Now, one of the ambers that I've gotten into way early on, along with Maitre Parfumé at Gantier, is Ambre Sultan. On this one right here. Unfortunately, it's at the very end of my bottle, but the new bottles are available. They've changed their whole packaging, of course. These little bottles are no longer available. Once all the discounters run out, you have to get to the large 100 ml bottle. But man, this is so good. This is one of those ambers that's resinous, that's um, syrupy and gooey, but there's these like green like um, herbal notes in here that kind of like contradict with those ambery and resinous touches, which makes it a unique, like they sparkle if that makes sense, like little lights go off with those green touches and it's awesome. This is probably one of my top five, well, yeah, top five to top 10 ambers. It's, there's a lot of ambers here, so it's hard to pick, pinpoint which goes where, but I think it's bordering top five, if not top five. Ombre Sultan is amazing, check it out. Now this one is from a house that's rarely spoken about in the community. This is from Diana Vreeland, and this is Extravagant, Extravagance Ruse. Once again, we have two Ruse fragrances, both are ambers, this one and this one, Ombre Ruse and Extravagance Ruse. But this one is wow. This is a, a wow kind of fragrance and my favorite, favorite fragrance from this house. I love wearing it and it is really, woody and ambery, if that makes sense. Now, to me, it doesn't come off as syrupy as a lot of these other ambers. It's more drier, but it's necessar not necessarily as dry as like the, ta um, the Tower Perfumes, uh, Laird Desert Maro Cane. It's almost like very sheen and dry. It doesn't flow like the syrupy fragrances do flow. But wow, it's very bright and happy, even though it's an amber. So check it out, Dan of Reland and it is uh, extravagance ruse, awesome stuff. Now this next one is uh, a very ambery oud fragrance, but it's utilizing ambergris. It's from a designer house. I guess we do have another designer, but a very small designer house called Costume National, and this is Soul, this one right here. Now this is all about ambergris, but it got, it's got major ambery touches, but it's also got this very, very oudy touch. 
and of course uh, amber touches. So it's really quite lovely for a designer. Um, I find it to be quite masculine, um, even though it's a unisex scent, but I think women should be able to pull it off. If you like ambergris, there's a little bit of salty, woody touches as well, uh, created by Dominic Rupian. I absolutely love this one. So it's Costume National, so check that one out. A couple more to go, and here we have a fragrance from a house called Tio Cabanel, and this is Barkan, this one right here. This is a very, very resinous, resinous amber. Again, there's no list of amber, but they have um, labdanum and according to my research labdanum is one of the notes they use to create amber accords so it's got lots of myrrh and it's got lots of labdanum those are the dominant notes here so if you like resinous myrrh notes and of course labdanum and amber this is definitely one to try it's very very warm and spicy perfect for winter um, now this is a new house i haven't talked much about and i really want to explore this house it's a french house so i don't know if you know teal cabanel but let me know if you do and if you don't know barkan and you like ambery fragrance is check this out. This next one is from a house called Ormond Jane and this is Tolu. Um, it's very, very ambery. I love that about it, but it is also very uh, about tolu balsam. Tolu balsam are balsams and of course ambers. They kind of go hand in hand. Of course, it goes with resins as well, so it's very warm. But this one also, kind of like a Grand Soir and Dior's uh, Ambre Nuit, has this very translucency about it, lightness about it, airiness about it. So if you like ambers, but you all get overwhelmed because it's so heavy, thick, syrupy, intense, dense, whatever, this is definitely like one of those fragrances. Ormond Jane Tolu, awesome, awesome fragrance. A couple more, we're going to an old classic house which is rebranded to Goutal, it used to be Anik Goutal, this is Ambre Fatish. One of the most intense, a dark, smoky, resinous, woody, fiery kind of ambers that you can get. It's uh, overwhelming, a little goes a long way with this one, and this is one of their original formulations. As you can see, the bottle is no longer like this because they changed the bottle to a different design after this, and then they rebranded again. Now they are called Goutal Paris. So Ambre Fetiche is a one-of-a-kind, really, really dark amber, like extremely dark and smoky. Check it out. And uh, we have here Garuda from Jules et Mad, a very, very woody amber fragrance. It's all about a nice, uh, balance of woods and ambers together. This one's definitely uh, woody. If you like your ambers woody, slight bit of sweetnesses with the resinous touches in there and the balsamic touches, but if you, it's, it's woody, like it's overwhelmingly woody with the amber. So not one shines more than the other, if that makes sense. So you've got a equal amount of woods and equal amount of amber here, but a great, great house. Another house that I don't speak too much about, but hopefully I'll be able to explore this house, an underrated house, Juliet Mad. Last but not least, I'm not sure if this fragrance is still uh, existing. Uh, this is from uh, Nobile 1942, and this is Ambra Nobile, this one right here. Great, great, and inexpensive amber, because this one retails for about $140 for 100 ml. This is not the pricier collection from Nobile 1942, and it's a great, very easy to wear, spicy, warm and gooey, resinous amber. Um, amber Nobile, no Nobile 1942. If you don't know it, check it out. It's an Italian house, but they have a great, great co collection of fragrances, and this is definitely one of them. This one goes more traditional amber rather than like something like this, which goes very smoky, of course. And of course, this is a uh, very woody, uh, and uh, ambery fragrance. So there you have it. That's my list, the ambers. What are your thoughts, guys? Uh, do you like these fragrances or do you hate ambers in general? I mean, let me know. If you don't like ambers, I'd love to find out. Also, in any of these fragrances I spoke about, do you have any of them or do you wish to get them because you've been wanting them um, or, or there's something that's prevented you from getting them? Let me know that and put some comments down. Let's get a conversation started. Other than that, if you have any questions or comments, please list also and please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.